welcome to my studio. My name is Jasmine Bailey and I am a creative based in Torrington, Connecticut. Using a variety of tools and mediums, I bring the worlds and characters of my imagination to life. I'm an intensely curious individual and I love to learn. And for that reason, I often find myself immersed in several different projects at the same time. From needle felting, sculpting, and electronics, to electronic music, to sketching in my sketchbook. I dabble in many things and find the world around me quite fascinating. It's rather exciting, to be honest, and I'd like to share some of that excitement with you. Today, I'm going to be crafting and documenting an adventurer while taking you along through my creative process. Along the way, we'll talk about some of the tools and materials I use, as well as talk about some of the techniques that can help you create your own characters. For the most part, all you need is a pencil and paper. You may wish to have some clay or other creative materials for the end of the project, but it is not necessary. So when you're ready, let's get started. Inspiration is not something you can force. You have to be ready and open for it. So here are some ways I help myself find inspiration. I find a lot of my inspiration from other artists, actually. I love collecting art books from the artists that I follow online, so here's a few of my favorites. I find inspiration in their techniques, subjects, colors, and even the mediums they choose to use. I am otherwise curious about the world around me and find my inspiration from my everyday experiences like conversations I have with people, going to the grocery store, going to the park, going for a walk, talking to my guinea pig Finnegan. So when you sit down to be creative, you might not always have a prompt, like Earth Day, to help guide what you want to make. That's all right though, as long as you remember that the world around you and your everyday experiences can be a source of inspiration. While we will mostly be using a pencil and paper for this project, I do still want to talk about some of the tools and materials I use every day. My trusty sketchbook and pencil. These go everywhere with me so I can capture an idea when it strikes or pass the time. A sketchbook can be a reference you return to later for ideas or a wonderful way to track your growth and progress. These are my sketchbooks from the last four years. Look at all that progress. I also enjoy using toned papers for the way they make colors pop and watercolor paper for water-based media. Markers, colored pencils, gouache, and poster colors are currently some of my favorite mediums to create with. If you're a young artist, I encourage you to embrace experimentation. It's fun, and you'll be surprised at the results. Let's start off by figuring out who or what our character is. In the spirit of Earth Day, let's pick some earthy related themes. So I'm gonna start a list. I'm using a Sharpie and a pad of paper just so that you're able to see this, but you can absolutely use just like a regular pencil or pen or just a piece of paper, whatever you have laying around that you can make a list with. I recommend that. So let's think about some things that can be found in nature. Uh, we've got trees, birds, rocks, or pebbles, frogs. Maybe we can think about our favorite animals. My favorite animal is an elephant. I would be foolish to leave out guinea pig. What about insects? Or 
flowers, fish, flower pots can be found outside. If this seems kind of random, that's because it kind of is, and that's all right. For this project, I already know I want to do a what's in their bag type illustration, so I'm going to make two more lists of possibilities. Truthfully, a lot of the characters that I draw are often naked, but that's not really um, decent in society. So let's, let's try to come up with some things that they could be wearing. How about a hat? Clothing in general. What if they're carrying a shovel? Or maybe they have a cape. They're an adventurer, after all. Maybe, maybe they're a wizard. So they have a staff. Maybe we're getting some fantasy elements in here. That's exciting to me. What if they have um, a bug net? Some Animal Crossing vibes here. Maybe they have a camera to document the world around them. A watch to tell the time and a compass. So they theoretically always know where they are. I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Hold on, wait, I did forget something. A bag. <laughs> because we're going to make one more list. What's in their bag? Hmm? We said a couple of good things in the last list, like maybe they have a magnifying glass, magnifying glass. Uh, maybe they have a book. Maybe they have a tiny shovel, flashlights are important. And of course, if you have a flashlight, you should also also have spare batteries. Always be prepared. A knife, if they have to cut something. Maybe they're rounding up mushrooms. Oh, maybe they're a mushroom collector. What about, we have book, but also what about a journal? Or a teacup for drinking water. That sounds a little delicate, but we can do whatever we want. But just in case, we can say flask or maybe water bottle. Maybe they've gathered some nuts or seeds. Maybe they found a feather. You know what? If you're out and about outside on an adventure in nature, you know what you should always bring with you? An extra pair of socks. I do recommend that. Let's see, if you have a journal, that means you're also going to need a pen or a pencil. And I think that's about all I can come up with at the moment. If you can come up with anything else, I invite you to write it down, absolutely. All right, now that we've made these lists, we can go back and start to explore some character design. Let's start with our who or what list. For this, I'm still going to be using a Sharpie and this pad of paper, just so that you're able to see what I'm doing. If you're following along, I do recommend that you use a pencil and whatever paper that you have is fine. So let's pick an item on our list. I'm personally going to pick a bird because I know that I've been wanting to draw a bird lately. So when we're designing our characters, we can always look at the reference that we find online in the books that we have. We can go outside and find a bird. Um, but one of my favorite ways to craft characters is to actually do so from my imagination. So let me kind of show you some things that you can do to help that. Try this out with me if you'd like. We have three simple shapes to remember. Circles. Triangles. And squares. Don't forget about other kinds of marks that we can make too like straight lines, squiggly lines, dots, loop-de-loops, and bumps or waves, which is kind of a lot like squiggles, so let's make it more wavy. Here we go, bunch of sharks in the water. Look out. So when you think about a bird and when you think about drawing a bird, Thinking of our mark making, I bet a lot of us draw birds like this. And that's a beautiful bird. Don't you dare let anybody tell you that that is not a beautiful bird. What if, utilizing our three basic shapes, 
we made a bird out of a triangle. So we can put its legs here. Uh, and maybe it's got giant eyeballs. And a super long beak. And it has to have some tail feathers too. It's perfect. What if we tried to change up some of its features a bit? So we can still have a triangle. But what if it has much smaller eyes? A much smaller nose? And here's its feet. I like that bird too. What if we started with a circle? Mm, every bird's got to have a head, so maybe we can put we just put a head on there. Get some small eyes going. Maybe it has a really large beak again. And some head feathers. And those tail feathers. And some really knobby knees. And it has to have a wing, of course. There we go. That's a beautiful bird. What if we try to circle again? And we exaggerated the features again, so we made it have giant eyes and a giant nose and really short legs. What if we tried a different, a slightly different shape? What if we used a shape like this? And I think I want this bird to be sitting down. And maybe it has giant eyes again and a long nose and our little head feather tufts. What if, what if we exaggerated that shape? What if we made it like this? Also sitting down. Maybe we have small eyeballs. Oh yes, I like this. So let's see, we have six, we, look at that. Using simple shapes, look at this. We've got circles, we've got more circles, we've got these triangle shapes. We've got lines, we've got straight lines for legs. We have lines with bumps in them. We have straight lines for feathers. We've got, um, what is that? It's like a curvy line, a U shape. We've got U shape for feathers. So look at that, we have, we have six different bird designs and it only took us like three minutes to do that. Wasn't that fun? In this section, you can see my initial designs for our character. I use those basic shapes that we talked about to start them off, and then I add my designs on top of them. I went through a few possibilities, but in the end, I chose the tree stump from our list. They're wearing a bag, and they have a bird friend as a companion. Now that I know what I'm drawing, and have chosen a character to continue with, I set out to make my sketch on my final surface. I've chosen this toned gray paper because I love the way it makes colors pop, and I'm sketching with my favorite trusty blue pencil. This is my last chance to get out final details and make sure everything is working before I make permanent lines. I take a moment to try things out, erase, put back. Sometimes, if the image is really complicated, I'll actually do this step digitally. I'll print the image out and then I'll trace it onto my final surface. It just makes things easier. When I'm satisfied that I have everything in place, I begin the inking process. This is just my way of making illustrations. Some people may choose not to add outlines to their character, and that also leads to some great results. These choices that you make all contribute to your personal style, which can change over time. For this illustration, I've decided to use a felt tip pen, which has a flexible nib at the tip that allows me to vary my lines. Some are thick, while others are quite thin. I love the organic feeling that has, and I felt that it fit this character very well. He is an organic creature after all. I used to be terrified of adding color to my drawings, so a lot of my old work is actually in black and white. 
These alcohol markers are the first colored medium I got really comfortable and confident using. While I wait for my ink outlines to dry, I'll test out some color schemes. This is ultimately a tree stump, so I went with earthy colors. I take my time and do my best to color within the lines. I'll layer my colors and make sure surfaces are covered before moving on to the next color. These are just base colors. The fun really begins in the next step. I absolutely love the textures that colored pencils add when I layer them on top of other mediums like markers or gouache. Even though I call them the pizzazz of a drawing, they're there to simply support the show. You'll notice that I mostly use a similar color colored pencil on the area I'm drawing on. They help colors pop and bring a texturized interest to certain parts of the drawing. Sometimes they're just a fun way to add even more color or a color that can't be easily added by markers, like lighter colors, for example. My absolute favorite part of any drawing is adding bits of white colored pencil. There's just something about it that is so appealing. Following the exact same process, I took items from the lists we made and made them into this final illustration showing what our character is carrying around in their bag, adding a little bit more depth to their story. I think my favorite part might be the socks, just because I think that's really funny. And we're done! Or are we? First of all, take a moment to marvel what you've created. You did a fantastic job! Show your friend, show your mom, show the grocery store clerk. I want to make sure that we have pride and take joy in what we've created. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to put mine on the wall for a little bit. While our drawing can certainly stand and exist as its own piece of work, sometimes I find further inspiration in them. I might love my characters so much that I choose to bring them to life beyond just on paper. Maybe it's through sculpting. Needle felting, wood carving, 3D modeling, animation, a diorama, or the soundtrack to their walk through the woods. It's really enjoyable to inspire yourself to continue to create. Maybe someday you'll have created so much you'll have built a whole world around your own characters. I hope this has been insightful and inspired a curiosity on how you can creatively explore the world around you and express yourself. If you have any questions at all, or just want to share your projects with me, feel free to contact me at my website or through my Instagram page. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a happy Earth Day, and good luck on your adventures. Toodaloo!